Welcome to Sustain This, a podcast where we discuss mindful consumption, personal style, and the quest for living a more intentional life. I'm Alyssa, a sustainable stylist. And I'm Christina, a shopaholic turned minimalist-ish. And I'm Sina, a color consultant and slow fashion style coach. Together, we will unpack the nuances of what it really means to be a conscious consumer and find more joy in what we have right now. So grab your tea, your coffee, or whatever floats your boat, and join us in the conversation. Let's go. Yay. 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 (laughs) <laughs> okay, so in today's episode, I would love to get into a concept that I've talked a lot about on my YouTube channel, and it's a concept that I struggled against for a long time, especially when I was in the depths of my chronic shopping habit, and that is the fantasy self. Have you guys ever heard that term before? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> To some mm-hmm. to some degree, I would love to hear yeah. more about your journey with or like yeah. your story behind that. Yeah, totally. So I think in this episode, I want to get into what the fantasy self means. If you've never heard of that term before, who your fantasy self might be and if they're getting in the way or a little bit toxic, how to declutter them. And I think also there is a way to use your fantasy self in a way that is healthy and you can use to improve the things that you want to improve about yourself. So I think let's get into it. That was a script. I read that. That was a good intro. It. Yeah. I like how I just want to say how you are looking at both sides of the coin and how there mm-hmm. is also a positive aspect to the fantasy self because I feel like a lot of a lot of things in fashion, kind of like we spoke about in our previous episode, which I will link back to, is like a lot of what revolves around fashion can be seen as frivolous. So Mm -hmm. I think it's amazing and very empowering that hopefully today we're going to talk about, um, and I want to hear more about both of your thoughts about how we can declutter the bad, but keep that good. Because I do think, I, I never thought of it that way, but yeah, what a it can be a powerful thing to kind of dress for the person who you want to be, blah blah blah. But in a less trite in a less trite way. So I'm I'm excited yeah. to dig into mm-hmm. that. And that's essentially, I think, the exact way that you can embrace it, um, because I think it is a little bit of like you have to push yourself a little bit to get to this place that you want to be, and it's a little bit challenging. Um, but you don't have to completely replace yourself in the process. The fantasy self, I would say, would be defined as the idealized image of who you want to be and how you want others to perceive you as being. So taking it back to style, my fantasy self back in the day, and I think it's still a little bit of my fantasy self now, is it's, I have always called her the cool girl this like persona that, you know, she's a little bit edgy. She's a little bit rock and roll, but she, she wears high heels all the time. She's effortless. She's part Parisian, cool. She's Scandinavian. She's all these things. (laughs) Um, But where there was a lot of a disconnect for me and I realized I was sort of shopping for my fantasy self was I would buy all these pieces to match that persona And then I would never wear them. I would never like, uh, you know, how many of us want to be like a Carrie Bradshaw from Sex and the City and have a closet full of Manolo Blahnik shoes, but you wear sneakers all day in your real life. Uh, And even if you had the opportunity to wear those high heels, somehow you don't reach for them. So that could be part of a fantasy self that isn't aligning with your actual self. And for me, that's, when I first started my sort of decluttering journey and figuring out my personal style and addressing my shopping habits, I had to kind of figure out who that fantasy self was and see if, um, just see if my real life was aligning with that at all. Hmm. So how would you like re-describe like now that you've kind of, you feel more realigned what are the parts that stayed like how would you describe the parts that stayed if that makes sense yeah I think um 
I, I like to look at it a little bit more kind of like how you guys do it in the three words and like a style persona. So I would say my style now is minimal, relaxed, um, and a little bit classic. So the relaxed part of my style would be very, you know, I, I would call that like the cool girl. But I mean, like, you know, right now in my style, I don't wear graphic tees all the time. I don't wear band tees or like... Um, I have a lot fewer high heels. Like I had a closet full of heels and wedges and like, you know, four or five inch heels. Like why, why not, you know, if you like that, go for it. But for me in my life, it was not a thing. And I'm like, I walk to work every day. I live in, I live in Toronto. It's a very um, walkable, walking heavy city. I stand all day at work. So where do, where does this closet full of shoes fit into my life? kind of thing. Mm. So now, you know, I have a lot of sneakers. I have a lot of flats and I really embrace that, but you can still make it part of, you know, that relaxed, cool, minimal style that I still like to embrace. Hmm. How did you let go of the fantasy self? Cause that's hard like all of those beautiful especially if you're someone who just likes aesthetics I think that's my biggest mm-hmm. problem is like but this is beautiful mm-hmm. I just want to own it like <laughs> I just want to keep it in my sphere of things to look at because it's like art and it's gorgeous and I I don't want anyone else to have it. totally and I mean in that case I don't think I wouldn't say that that's part of your fantasy self then because that's right. there's some authenticity within that So I think for me, like if you have a fantasy self, especially staring back at you in your closet, um, I think it's really just owning Mm. what it is you like and what it is that speaks to you. And because you don't like what I realize now in the more sort of minimalist ish approach to decluttering and living and shopping and all of that stuff is you can have stuff that you never use. Mm hmm. Um, but I would almost say a f- like, you know, you want to get rid of it, especially in a fantasy self sort of, um, angle would be is if you look at that stuff and it makes you feel bad, right. Um, it makes yeah. you feel like, like you feel guilty because you never wear this or it evokes some kind of, this is not me feeling, or I need to be somebody else to wear this or to use this kind of thing. Like for me, the fantasy self was a way that I could suppress Christina in a way, Mm. like, like almost that I wasn't good enough the way I was. So then I needed to like, Mm. I needed to shop my way into improving that Mm. when really I think it's more you find out who your authentic self is when you start exploring if you're starting in your closet, if you want to, because I think you can find your own authenticity within your style, within your wardrobe, it's like, Mm -hmm. what do I like? What speaks to me? And not necessarily approaching it from, oh, am I actually going to wear this kind of thing? You know? I love that. I recently started to actually, this is so interesting because I did declutter a lot of my heels that I used to wear like in finance. And I was like, well, I'm not sitting at a desk anymore, but I've kept some that are comfortable. And I found as I'm, I I love that you kind of underscored that point for me, Christina, like it was a good reminder because I've kept a bunch of my heels and I've actually started to wear more heels. And I don't know if it's because it's summer or maybe it's because I'm single now. And it's like, no, like I want to embrace this like bombshelly like vintage Italian like you know like the, mm-hmm. the, the Sophia Lorenz and like those classic I don't know and I think I've started to kind of move in that direction um and uh I just want to say thank you for the reminder that it's not mm-hmm. a bad thing <laughs> to like wear yeah. these especially in my city because it's like no one wears heels mm-hmm. like <laughs> Everyone's on a hiking. random afternoon everyone yeah in <laughs> Ottawa everyone's like let's go to Gatno and like bike or whatever yeah so it's um you kind of get looked at and I think to your point if if you're owning it and if it's authentic to you I think that's a very very important point so mm. thank you for that reminder 
Yeah. Rocket, and also baby. for for keeping things even though you're you might not be wearing it right now because I think that's probably where I've made some mistakes along the way since tuning more into like I'm really into minimalism as well it really speaks to me I like having less and I like having things that I know I can put to use and then kind of cutting the excess away but it's about like finding that balance like mm -hmm. of not decluttering everything because life is dynamic you might change your mm -hmm. mind at some point and I feel like For me, like my fantasy self, what I don't feel like I've had like a core like image of myself or like my fantasy fantasy self, but I definitely feel like after getting into minimalism, it's very much been that very stereotypical, you know, neutral colored minimal capsule wardrobe. Like you can see that when you look back at some of my older pieces of content, that's really who I thought I was going to be. And I do mm -hmm. like a big part of me still connects with that like 2016 version of myself. But today, like, I feel like I want colors. I want to be more playful. I want other things which, which I feel are much more authentic to me. So my fantasy self was actually this really, like, stereotypical, minimal, mm -hmm. Pinterest, beautiful, like, aesthetically pleasing. Like, when you're scrolling through a really minimal, aesthetically pleasing Instagram account, like, that's what I wanted to fit into. But yeah you know, in reality, that was not who I was. Yeah. And it feels like, I think you can feel that, uh, misalignment, you know, there's this feeling in your gut that like, it's like almost like I'm pushing too hard for this. And when I finally got there, it just doesn't feel good. Like you, you kind of want to push back against it, whether it be, you know, like this is an oatmeal rainbow closet or like everything's black and white and sterile feeling. And yeah. now I want to push back by adding color and, um, and that kind of thing. So I think with the fantasy self, like I've seen a lot of comments when I talk about it on my YouTube channel, how it's very um, eye opening for a lot of people in the sense of like, oh, I realized I was shopping for this particular version of myself when really this is what I do every day. And it's not to downplay the life that you live every day. Like I think a lot of us perceive our lives as being like really boring and mundane and nothing really exciting. So like adding in these really cool fantasy pieces can be a way to add excitement. Um, but I think a lot of people f are have noticed that maybe that part of your closet is is taking over or there's just mm -hmm. not a lot of use that I'm getting out of these pieces. And on top of that, every time I see them, I just don't like I'm just reminded of that like this sucks. It doesn't feel good. So I would say like get rid of it. Like for me, uh one of my fantasy selves <laughs> was like uh, wearing bike shorts. Ooh. And they're just like, it's just a no, like, no, <laughs> Chris, real, real Christina doesn't wear bike shorts and that's okay. That's not for me. <laughs> so I think it's a part of like, it's really knowing what, what you like and what works for you, but also, um, thinking about it in a way that like you can use it to evolve your style and to experiment and play around um, without replacing yourself in the process. So I kind of think of a fantasy self as almost like like where you can use your fantasy self in a positive way. I think is almost like um, if you want to, for example, if you want to take on a new habit or you want to learn a new skill or let's say you're starting off at the gym because you want to be healthier, you want to be able to like run around and chase your kids going from like a sedentary lifestyle to a more active one, that is, a f to me, that's a form of positive self-improvement to better yourself and to become a better version of yourself without saying that the version of you today is not good enough. It's just, I want to be better and these are some of the ways that I can be. Yeah, I feel like that's a really healthy way to approach it. Um Like when I'm working with my own style, but also when working with clients, we all always start with the wardrobe and from the wardrobe and out. Um, and I feel like that's kind of similar to what you say, Christina, that, you know, you need to work with what is working for you and what is good. And then kind of at the same time, 
kind of challenge yourself because you can definitely like improve your mental state or whatever it is that you kind of want to improve um, or just like your general aesthetic, like your style and the way you put together outfits. Um, and I feel like I've said this before, but it's like, I kind of go back to that phrase, like if you change nothing, nothing will change. Mm -hmm. So definitely if there's something you want to change, then definitely like do the effort, but also know, as you say, that you don't have to change everything because very likely that something is already working and you don't need to like just throw all that away. Um, it can be like small tweaks or small things that you need to improve to get somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Cause I also think that like, cause going back to when Alyssa asked sort of who my fantasy self was at the beginning and then who I kind of think it is today, it's like, obviously there's some inspiration that we take from the fantasy self. So like, you know, for me, it was a lot of like rock and roll edgy or like minimalist Parisian kind of style. And I still get very inspired by a lot of that today. Um, but I just think there's some things sometimes that now I can recognize that now nah, I don't need this or I don't need this part of the aesthetic. I can take elements of it or just embrace what works in my life and kind of leave what doesn't. Hmm. I like that. I like how we're kind of also touching on where the fantasy self comes from these like external like maybe trends or other people like the Parisian and everything. I struggled a lot with maybe not necessarily having such a, I don't know if you, if you guys struggled with this, but I struggled with the comparison and always comparing myself to, to people around me, especially in my early twenties when I was working in an office and there were all these like really fabulously like well-dressed women. And I would just, I think I was just so like, okay, like I need to look like these women. Like I like what she's wearing. I'm going to try this. I like what she's wearing. I'm going to try this. And I think it's very easy to get lost both from like that comparison perspective of maybe your like your bubble, whatever bubble you're living in, but also just from a trends perspective. Like I find your fantasy self with all of the imagery that we're faced with every day, it can be like, yeah like uh, parisian rock and roll like metallic whatever like y2k mm -hmm. so it's uh, yeah it's i think getting the inspir like what's the difference between harnessing inspiration and then like you know honing in on your fantasy self i think is a, that used to be a big big struggle for me um but i don't know if you, if you guys ever struggled with that like comparison to to people around you or other people in your life and and you thought that that was like an avenue towards a better you when really you were just lost. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I definitely recognize it like at some at some level. I'm curious to hear if you guys have ever like had like, obviously, Alyssa, you mentioned like real people around you. Do you mm. guys have any like style icons like that you look up to or because I feel like, you know, that's definitely been the struggle for me sometimes that I find someone and that I really love the way that she's dressing or this person is dressing. Mm -hmm. And I could be like, oh, I want to look like that too, or I want to dress that way too. Like, have you guys had any like style icons or like people that you've been looking up to like that? For me, for a long time, it was Anita Bing. Hmm. I recognize that. Yeah, I feel yes. like we've had that <laughs> common. Like we've had that style icon in in common. I still yeah. love her style. Oh, me way, too. Right? She's <laughs> such a such a babe. So cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think that's where a lot of it. That's my. Um, I can't quite remember, I can't quite think beyond that, like earlier than that, but she really just sticks out in my mind as like, she was just perfection for me. Just really cool, really edgy, really chic. Um, but what I kind of realized, and I'm thinking about Anina Bing today, she's very consistent. And I think what I fantasize the most about her is that and even any inspiration that I get from people I see like on the street or on Instagram, it, I find um, I find I'm very attracted to people who are like outfit repeaters, maybe not necessarily 
in the same exact outfit, but if you go on their feed, you kind of see the same style formula outfit uniform over and over again. And it always looks great. It always looks chic and cool. And I think, and I think it is that way because they really know themselves and they know their style. They know what works for them. And I think that's ultimately what I get attracted to. Mm. Yeah, I completely relate. Like, I feel like it's almost comforting at, at some level. Like, yeah, it it removes like the pressure a little bit. Like, okay, I can actually wear the same thing over and over again and still look cute. Yeah, and it's just like, it's just, there's this this aura of ease, I think, and confidence and like this just cool, like that, the word effortless, like you just threw that look together. But I think when you really know yourself and know your style, that becomes, that can become very easy. And I, I really think it's that essence that people are attracted to, not necessarily like the clothes itself. Mm. So but for a long time, but I think we still even do this, whether it can be through like recreating outfits and sometimes it just like doesn't feel right, for example. And I think it's um, maybe because it just, that just doesn't feel like you or it just feels like too much of a struggle. Um, and I think for me, what was the fantasy part of it was that I was just copying her mm-hmm. for a long time. So there was no spice of Christina in there. I just had like, like I would literally buy like the car, like I would buy stuff from her brand so that I could look exactly like her. And, um, and, and then, I, and then I just didn't, and like from that, I didn't know how to style it any other way kind of, kind of thing, you know? So it's just, there wasn't any creativity from my, on my end when it came to that. Mm-hmm. It's almost like it's, um, I wonder if yeah if you're if you're only shopping head to toe or you're you're not going deeper as to why you like that certain look then it's easy to just mask yourself and and lose yourself a little mm-hmm. bit mm-hmm. when you're not when you're not diving into it and asking yourself like the elements of why you liked it. Mm. So what inspires you guys today with your style? I think for me, it's very, like, I feel very at peace with my, like, the, my core style and the elements of style in my wardrobe. Like, I know the kind of pieces I look for. I get very inspired by color palettes mm-hmm. recently, which really, like, shows how much I've evolved in terms of color the past two years. Like, I get, like, I can see a color palette which has nothing to do with clothing and just be like, oh, I want my entire wardrobe to be, like, just covered in all of those colors. Um that's where I get really inspired um, lately, like kind of trying to translate that old self, like that really minimal black, white, gray version of me into something not super colorful. Like I'm never going to be like a super colorful rainbow palette type of person. I think I still like it to be muted and I still like to have like a solid, like a fair amount of neutrals in my wardrobe to kind of tone things down. But I definitely get like very inspired by certain like color, like soft color palettes at the moment. Yeah. That's really cool. How about you guys? Where do you get your inspiration from? Me? Uh, It's tough. You know, like I think um, these days it's like, through travel I think like mm. destin more destinations maybe um yeah d- destinations I like to I almost feel like I'm doing a bit of like character <laughs> character development these days mm. like where am I going and I mm. really like to dress for the venue almost like I don't know um yeah, I'm very much inspired by sort of where where I'm going these days or yeah. just like a destination like a, I'm going I'm 
fortunate to go to Italy this summer. So I'm really pulling inspiration from like, like I was saying, like the old school Italian, like Riviera vibes. Yeah, like- that's so cool. I love it. I love like how you say romantic. that your life, like life events is kind of reflecting or being reflected upon your like, Yeah. Yeah. I kind of want to run with this. So let's, so you're inspired by that. Is there like, what's the avatar of this chic Italian Riviera inspired (laughs) person versus how will you take that and put it on Alyssa and stay Alyssa, but be in that place for you? It's a great question. I feel like I might cry. I feel like this is going to be like a very psychologically like deep dive. <laughs> um, I think for me, um, that's a really good question because because it's important to not lose yourself. Um, I think it's just adding those sort of romantic elements. So it will be a lot about the dialing I think I I very much still only feel comfortable in things that are played down like I'm really gonna have to hold on to that undone word uh so my three words are minimal classic and undone but I'm adding like the the variant of bombshell in there because I just think it's cool I don't know (laughs) it's it's summer like it's the summer word you know and I thought it was good um but I really have to keep the undone version. I have to have something that feels like I like not trying too hard. So a lot of times for me, that's hair and actually that's hair and makeup for me. Like I'll go without makeup often um, or like I'll do my hair once and then I'll just leave it for like four days. <laughs> I was going like- to say like you're the bombshell factor. I feel like could be your hair. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think that's how I would do it is just not go overboard. And I often find myself sort of spinning and being like, like the other day I was like, I asked friends, I was like, do I need to get Botox? Like, do I need to start wearing makeup? And it's kind of good to have friends who are like, no, no, you don't like, don't, don't feel like you have to. So that will be, yeah, hair and makeup are probably going to be the grounding factors because I love playing with clothing so much. So I'll use the clothing to maybe test out and be playful and maybe make mistakes and be like, ooh, this did not feel like me Um, because I think that's just part of getting dressed every day. Um, But the hair and makeup will keep it, hopefully, Alyssa. (laughs) That's really interesting. So I think, and I think that's a perfect example of, so maybe I can consider a lot of our inspiration, especially if they're other people can be, um, they can be a version of a fantasy self that we want to emulate, but it's exactly how you're saying, Alyssa, how do I take that and keep it inspiration without losing myself Hmm. within that? Because that's when like I would almost equate a fantasy self and dressing exactly for your fantasy self could potentially feel very costumey. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah you kind of lose that 100%. authenticity that you that you need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it's exactly how you say bringing back elements of yourself or how I would mm. take pieces of this and bring it into me. And then now that I've done that, this is a way, this is a new option for me. This is another, this is along the road of, of, of my style evolution and experimentation without losing yourself in the process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's a great example of, again, something we've talked about before that um, like personal style is a form of identity work. Like even if something mm-hmm. happens in your life and you kind of need to f- find your ground again and figure out okay well who am I now who do I want to be but also just generally if you feel like shaking up your style or trying new things like you need to find ways to connect that with yeah like you say yourself and your identity Mm -hmm. I feel like too like having those three words are so tied to your identity so it's kind of good to have at least one or two that feel almost more like related to personality and values Mm. versus aesthetics I find that's helpful 
Yeah. Also, I have to I just want to say, like, I, I don't know if we should put this in or, or like, there, I hope, and I hope it didn't sound too judgy. Like, there's nothing wrong with Botox. I just, do you know oh, what I mean? Like, yeah. I just felt like makeup, like, I think it's great and wonderful. But like, it, it was a moment of like, okay, do I need to start putting more like makeup and effort and all that? I've had um, Botox. I've had filler. It's all in you here. You look so fantastic. Oh, thanks. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, I yeah. agree. It's like, you know. Is you it don't a, have to if yeah. you don't want to. Yeah. If you don't want to. Yeah. Mm. It's whatever works. Because I feel I just, completely like I I love, you know, the fact that people do that if they want yes. to. Um, but if you don't want to, you're like, you don't need to feel pressured either way. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. <laughs> Yeah. I just had a thought regarding how to declutter the fantasy self. I would almost, what do you guys think about, I'm just thinking about the the idea of, so the way I often approach declutters is I want to approach things from a perspective of things that I want to keep first. So mm-hmm. I would divide my piles into a hell yes, hell no, and a maybe pile. And I almost feel like sometimes for sure, some fantasy self items for me when I was decluttering my closet were hell no. They were kind of like, what, you know, if you if you look at those things and it's like, what were you thinking? But going back to you, Alyssa, saying like, oh, I have some of those, some of those shoes and some of those things that I never wear. I think a lot of the fantasy self when you're, if you want to sort of edit some of it out, it's like what do you, it's to me, it's like a version of the maybe pile. Mm in that in that declutter so when you guys are decluttering what do you do with your maybes what's your usual approach I store them away like I have a few storage boxes where I'll I'll put them for a while like and they can be there for a long time like sometimes I've stumbled upon things I've had for like two or even five years and then suddenly I want to wear it again um and that's where I feel like a lot of Decluttering guides will tell you like when if you haven't worn it for the past three months or for the past six months, you need to get rid of it because you will never yeah. wear it again, which oh, over I've, <laughs> I've definitely found that to be untrue, like for me personally. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah, 100%. Same. I keep it. I keep it for a little while. Um, and I try to keep it somewhere where it's still like within my eye line, if possible, or like pretty easily accessible. Mm-hmm. Um, so that way it's, it kind of stays top of mind or I see it like I'm constantly being triggered by it as an option. And I'm like, no. So it's like the more times I say no to it, the more confident I can be when I actually do declutter it. Mm. Um, but then there's also, I just like how we touched on, you know, there are items in your closet that you might only wear or I don't like once or twice a year. And that's okay too, to keep those items, you know, like like the frivolous skirt or the fun shoes. Um, so I think that's that's an important point. But yeah, I try to keep the maybes close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do I the like same thing. I, I'll store them. <clears throat> I'll store them away or sometimes I will try to style them. Yes. And I think this is a technique we've all talked about where if you have this maybe item or this really out there piece, you ground it and bring it back with – some of the pieces that you wear all the time, mm-hmm. the pieces you feel very comfortable in. And I find if it's a fantasy self item and I've tried to style it and it still feels off, I still feel uncomfortable, fussy, just just not, not myself, then that to me is a signal that I could probably get rid of this and this is something I can declutter. Mm-hmm. I'll often try to also alter in the maybe pile, like before mm. it gets there, I'll try to take it to a tailor and alter it to see if that makes a difference. Um, and then, yeah, if it's still not working and it's in that maybe pile and I never reach for it, it's yeah. like, you know. Mm. For sure. And I think it's important to like, to remember when it does come to decluttering just in general, like, I don't think you can make a huge mistake. Like, there's a lot of clothing on the planet. Like, mm-hmm. you'll you'll find something else. And maybe, like, 
your, your next fan, your, the next iteration of your fantasy self will look completely different. So it's like an opportunity for exploration as well. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Mm. I think that's the, using it as an opportunity for exploration and evolution, I think is the healthiest way to, to look at it. Thank you so much for joining in our conversation this week. If you're enjoying the show, we'd love it if you subscribe to the podcast on Spotify and Apple and leave us a rating and review. It's one of the best ways to support the Sustain This podcast at zero cost to you. We're also a community-led podcast, so if you have any questions for us, topic requests, or even guests you want to hear from, please send us a DM on Instagram at sustain this underscore podcast. We hope you join us again next Tuesday where we'll talk about so much more than clothes. Ciao!